Ratios are absolutely critical to financial statement analysis. That's because we can use ratios to analyze a company's performance over time, spotting any trends or changes in profitability, leverage, or other factors. But we can also use ratios to analyze a company's performance compared to that of its competition. We can look at competitor A and competitor B and say, how does their profit margins compare to the company that we're looking at? So people generally put ratios into five different categories. Okay, so we've got profitability ratio, short-term liquidity, long-term solvency, activity, aka efficiency ratios, and market value ratios. I'm going to go over each of these categories in more detail in the videos to come, but I just want to give you a general overview here. So profitability ratios is margins and rates of return. So there's really two different types of profitability ratios, and they tell you different things. Margins are things like gross margin, operating margin, profit margin, they tell you about a company's ability to manage its expenses. They can also tell you a little bit about the company's strategy because like companies, for example, that tend to have like higher prices and be more like a differentiator type strategy with like a higher quality product, uh, you might expect them to have higher profit margins. Now, rates of return are also related to profit. But what we're doing with rates of return, we have things like return on assets, return on equity, return on invested capital. What we're doing with each of those is we're taking some measure of profit, usually net income, and dividing it by something. So, for example, ROA, we take net income and divide it by the company's average total assets. That gives us an idea of how profitable the company is given the assets it has at its disposal. And that's really helpful if you're comparing two companies. Let's say you're comparing company A and company B. And company A is a lot larger than company B. You would expect company A to have more profit if you just look at net income because it's a larger company. But when we scale net income by total assets, right now we're getting an idea, okay, how good are you at generating profit given the assets you have? Okay, and then return on equity, thinking how good are you at generating returns uh, for your equity holders in terms of profitability. We'll go over those in more detail. We can even decompose ROA and ROE into their component parts. Now, short-term liquidity has to do with, is this company going to be able to pay their bills in the next year? Are there going to be any problems with, you know, right now, next 12 months, is this company going to have any issues where they're not able to pay their suppliers or, or something like that? We've got different measures. We've got the current ratio. We've got the quick ratio. Long-term solvency also has to do with the company's ability to pay its bills, but we're thinking beyond this year. So we've got a couple different types of long-term solvency ratios. We've got a lot of different types of debt ratios. With debt ratio is trying to measure how leveraged is this company? Like how much have they borrowed? Okay, so how much how much debt do they have? And there are different ways we can measure debt ratio. For example, you look at like long-term debt divided by total assets. And you say, well, what does that tell us? Well, if one company, 60% uh, of their total assets are uh, financed by long-term debt, but another company is just like 10% of their assets are financed by long-term debt, we'd say, okay, well, this one is a lot more, a lot more leveraged. They have a lot more debt. But just because a company has more debt doesn't mean it's not going to be able to pay the interest and, and repay the principal on the debt. And that's where we come in with coverage ratios. Coverage ratios, like, for example, interest coverage ratio, we're looking at a measure of profitability, uh, uh, you know, basically as a multiple of the interest expense that the company's incurring. So we're looking at, okay, just because you have a lot of debt and you got a lot of interest doesn't mean you're not going to be able to pay it. If you have a lot more profit than you have interest, then you're going to be okay. Now, if you start losing money, uh, then we got a problem. And that's, you know, one of the issues with leverage, right? The interest has to be paid whether or not the company is profitable. Now, activity ratios, aka efficiency ratios, uh, we've got, we can think about things like uh, the asset turnover, uh, account receivable turnover, inventory turnover. And so whenever you hear like turnover, think, okay, this is an activity ratio. Activity ratios are really helpful. So like as asset turnover is tell us like how efficient is this company at using the assets it has to, to generate sales. Okay, so that's asset turnover. Uh, but we can also think like inventory turnover. How many times a year does this company sell through its inventory? And then we can actually convert that. We can convert inventory turnover to days to sell inventory. And then there's things like account payable turnover. And count, uh, we can we can convert that to how many times, how many days does it take the company to pay its suppliers? Then we're going to use those things, okay? When we get the days payable, um, there are days to pay the the suppliers, um, days to sell the inventory, days to collect receivables. When we get all those, we can actually calculate uh, the company's cash conversion cycle, its operating cycle. We're going to go over that in a lot more detail. I know I'm throwing a lot of terms at you right now. I'm just trying to give you an overview. But we can do a lot of exciting stuff. It's really helpful to know how long does it take to this company to sell its inventory 
Is it 28 days? Is it whatever? And what if it's getting worse over time? What if it was 28 and then now it's 41 and then now it's like 52? We say, wow, it's taking longer and longer for this company to sell through its inventory. Maybe some of the inventory is obsolete if we're talking about a technology company or something or whatever. You know, so this is this is really helpful. We're going to be able to do a lot uh, with these activity ratios. Now, market value ratios we're getting into things like the market to book ratio, uh, the PE ratio, and now we're getting into things we're talking, when people call it like market value ratios. What we're thinking about is like, you know, is this company what we call like a value stock, or is this a growth stock? Okay, and when we talk, I'll, I'll talk. I'll have a video where I talk about value stocks versus growth stocks. But let's just take the PE ratio for example. Okay, let's just use that one example here. Let's say you have a company with a P.E. ratio of $10, and then you have another company with a P.E. ratio of $90. Basically, one way of thinking about this is someone is saying, like, well, for this company, someone's willing to pay $10 for $1 of earnings, whereas this company, someone will pay $90 for $1 of earnings. And we say, well, why, why would there be such a discrepancy? Well, people think that this company here in the future is got a lot more growth opportunities and so they're not just paying that $90 it's just like oh a dollar of earnings today in the future this company's actually going uh the earnings are going to grow dramatically whereas this company maybe the earnings are just going to remain stagnant they're just going to be flat and so we'll talk about all each of these different categories i'll go through a lot of different ratios and i'll show you how to apply them to actual companies with some real numbers in the videos to come